Hi, everybody. I am Matthew Miller, the Fedora Project Leader, and this is a Fedora Council video meeting. We try to do our business by email and chat most of the time, tickets, rather than ha having to get together to do a meeting. But we found out that actually having the get-togethers for meetings is valuable, and having a video meeting every now and then helps us all kind of stay connected. And we try to, you know, we, we've decided to focus these video meetings on basically looking at some part of the project, either um, a area which needs some support or an area which we'd like to shine more light on or maybe kind of an emerging technology area. Um, and this time we are talking about source Git, which is very much an emerging technology area and kind of a interesting future uh, technological uh, direction for building packages in Fedora. And uh, we have Tomasz Tomacek and Hunar whose last name I'm not going to mangle again. He's told me that that is okay. Um, and they are, uh, we don't, we, there's not a presentation this time, but we're going to have kind of a discussion about it and see, see where that goes. Um, so, welcome. Thank you for introduction. Uh, so we didn't prepare anything, but I guess we can give you a short intro of what circuit is and what our plans are and what the current status is. It should take, I, I guess, a few minutes. That would be excellent. Yeah, and if you could try and uh, aim this at a fairly, like, um, I don't necessarily even know how packaging works level, um, we can go into the details more. But uh, yeah, this is kind of for a general audience. We'll start there and then we can go into more more gritty details as we get further into the call. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I can start and Honor, if you have more comments, we can then turn over to you. That's fine. Sure. sure. Uh, okay, so source git, what it is. Uh, it's it's actually a way to uh, have packages within downstream and even the term source git is kind of misleading because it's pretty much upstream git. It, it, it means that you have a project, let's say upstream project, let's go for Kubernetes, and you want to have it in downstream, which means Fedora Linux or CentOS stream. And the way we have it right now is very far away from upstream, like how upstream looks at their projects. So we created this thing called source git. Uh, and by creating, I mean, there are people who created it and we just took away and started shepherding in more and building a tooling around it and ecosystem documentation workflows. And at this point, we are in a pretty good spot. We already have a bunch of repos which work like this. We just trying to like go further with the documentation and go further with workflows so that it's like end to end. Right now it's not end to end, it's like two thirds or something like that. Uh, so so in, in the, the traditional packaging model for Fedora, what happens is upstream, that's the project that we're packaging up, might have version control, like they have their package on GitHub somewhere. Uh, but Fedora actually predates GitHub by quite a lot and predates, um, package, predates actually that being the standard practice for software. So Fedora's workflow is based, well, although we have our own Git repository, source control repository, it's based upon the idea of taking basically a, an archive, a tarball from the upstream. So the upstream will make a release and they will take it from their source code and package it all up into, you know, if, if you're not familiar with Linux compressions, you know, a, a tar gz file, tar xz file, basically a zip file of all the code. And then we'll download that, that zip file and then we put that into our a cache, and then our Git tree just has a spec file, which is the the rules for building that tarball into a into a executable program that you can run. You can download and install as an RPM on your on your system. Um, so source Git um, works more closely with the actual version control of the upstream. Uh, as I understand it, right? So it goes straight yeah. from that source into an RPM, or how, how does it, how, what's the basics of how it works? So, uh, may I, Thomas? Sorry, I, I'm not sure if I interrupted you. So, uh, the basic problem that 
we are trying to address with SourceGate is like this discrepancy between how today upstream um, projects work in Git and how Fedora is uh, storing sources and downstream patches. Because yes, there is the spec file which tells how to build the RPM from that source archive, but there might be also some not encouraged because we are uh, Fedora tries to be upstream uh, first, but they might be spec files down, uh, sorry, patch files downstream. And then right. usually what packages want to do when they are pulling some change from upstream, for example, and they have a new archive and they want to apply the old patches on the new archive, is that they unpack that archive, they initialize a Git repo on their machines locally, and then they try to get those downstream patches and apply as Git commits and see if they work, if there are conflicts that are resolving them. And then once they have the new history, they basically they took those extra downstream commits and convert to patch files again and commit to uh, Fedora's Git repositories, the disk. So, uh, and basically what source Git tries to do is help with this to avoid this convoluted way of working with, with, with source code yeah. downstream. So just uh, to explain that a little bit more, in a Fedora package, if we have to make a change that's different from the way the upstream works, we include a patch file, which basically alters the source code. And that might be to make it build in Fedora properly. It might be to put the files in a location where they need to go in Fedora that the upstream package wants to put them somewhere else. Some of those like just moving things around patches, or it might be like we have a bug that is Fedora specific or a bug that we just have a fix for that we want to get in now. And sometimes in that last case, that bug is actually already fixed in the upstream, but it's not fixed in the release version. So we're pulling in patches that might not be there. But one of the key things is rather than being, so again, we're putting this in, in source control in Git and in source control, uh, a lot of people these days think of a, a patch as going from you know one state in the source control to another state in the source control. Like this is going from, you know, a, a commit is basically a change and a patch is a representation of that change. So in Fedora's what we call dist git, we actually store those patches as files. So the, they're not actually source control um, changes at all. They're the, by themselves new source files that are applied as part of the build process. And all of this is because the, our build process was invented before source control was a thing that everybody used or was used to using. So, um, and actually the thing you described of, of pulling it down from the upstream, putting it back into a Git repository and then extract, I, I, I personally have never done that. I always just work with the tarball as pure patches in a very old fashioned way when I'm working with a Fedora package, even if the upstream is properly, you know, using modern Git workflows, I revert to 20 year ago source code workflows when working with a source, you know, I unpack it, I make, I unpack it into a directory, I make my change, and then I do a diff across those two directories to make my patch. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, if if this, if I were doing that in a Git workflow, of course, I would just be able to have, you know, the Git diff to, to make the patch, um, but then still making it into a patch and then putting it, checking in that patch into disk Git is um, an extra, extra step. And if you want your work to be reviewed, then whoever reviews is going to review a patch of a patch, because yeah, that's it, what you are it, proposing as a change. And like right. these kind of indirections and strange things, uh, we would like to solve with uh, the, the source Git approach. And actually, like, and I would like to be clear because uh, sometimes uh, our team is invited, like we would invent the wheel or something, but we don't because people in Fedora already work this way. Like the Python folks have uh, the whole upstream Python code 
stored in GitHub in their repositories where they maintain their downstream branches and then they take that whole repository and have the tooling to convert in a disk git format. But the work they are doing is GitHub in a real git repo, not uh, this indirect way of, of, of working. So what we are trying to do is bring together tooling which could be shared by different teams within the, the Fedora ecosystem. Uh, thank you. Uh, Tomas, I definitely interrupted your introduction with my backstory. So if you had more, more you were saying, please continue. No, no, that's fine. Uh, I mean, it's a discussion, so I didn't want to ramble for too long. Uh, but the point I, try, I was trying to make was that the way we are doing packaging in Fedora, it's so different from upstream that if you ask someone from an upstream project and and tell him like please come to Fedora and fix this thing, like they would need to spend hours in reading documentation in order like have a try. And with SourceKit, we are trying to make the repositors repositories look exactly the same as they look in upstream, so that for an upstream maintainer or for like random contributor, it would really be the, exactly the same thing to open a pull request against source git as is with uh, upstream git or like upstream project. Um, so I actually have a question. Um, it's kind of a leading question. Uh, so that, that Python source git lives in GitHub, um, which um, which is fine, but uh, right now, with with our disk git, there's a centralized disk git where everybody, you know, you you may not you may not know exactly what the processes are or how that package works, but you know you can go to source.fedoraproject.org and find the spec file and RPM for that. With the source git approach, um, do I need to maybe have an account on you know uh, Bitbucket and GitHub and GitLab and somebody else's stood up thing and Pagger, depending on where? The possible, like, how, how do I how do I find where the source code is um, for something that's using source git? That makes sense. Well, yeah, that, that's a very good question. So, like, at some point, we would love to have these repositories stored within Fedora infrastructure. So you would go to source.fedoraproject.org, and you would be able to discover all of these repositories. Like, that's the future I, I would love to see. Uh, but when we tried to make a proposal for this last autumn, I remember that we were already too late with this, and specifically Smooch was suggesting that there is this data center move being done, and that's bigger priority than us having these kind of repositories in the infrastructure. So I really hope that for, um, I guess that for 34, this is already too late. And also, given the fact that there is this lots of discussion about changing GitForge for Fedora, so we are really just waiting for like for the dust to settle in, so that we can make a proposal, and then having all these repositories within the infrastructure and having like all integrated with the rest of the services. That makes sense. Um, so the idea would be basically to have a a, a level of indirection there. So the upstream would be cloned to a source fedora project.org um, source repo, and then it goes from there. So as I understand this, um, it go, it actually, the source repo then actually gets built into a traditional spec file and patches in diskit. Is that um, from, okay. if, if I look at the existing disk git for something that's using source git, what does that look like? Does that still exist or does it go straight you know, to Koji from source git? No, no, so we definitely, for this git is going to stay like the definitive source of uh, of true when it comes to what sources were built in Fedora. So we don't want to, at least for now, maybe like this is a long, long-term vision, but on a short and medium run, we don't want to replace this kit. We are not there yet. We we haven't proved ourselves enough to claim such thing. So current in the first step, source kit would be just a layer to to help developers do their work. 
and we would provide the service and the tooling to sync source Git repositories wherever they are stored in GitLab, GitHub, what, whatever you call it, um, to sync from there to Fedora Diskit in the proper Diskit format. Welcome. Okay. So let's say I have a package that I maintain um, that is kind of it's it's a it's not very active in the upstream, but it has patches every now and then. Uh, it's also it's an academic project, and as such, I need like ten patches to get it to actually build in Fedora and become a sensible Fedora package. Um, I guess the first step for for moving to this, this kind of workflow would be for me to clone the upstream repo and then create a new git repo with my patches that currently live you know in the spec file in the source rpm apply those to that and then that so then i've got a git repo with my patches applied um how would i hook that up to source git today what what do i do to make it happen well Actually, I would start this work with first forking that um, that upstream project in whatever Git forge you are using, or forking to a Git forge uh, where we support uh, source Git, and then just create a branch in which you would like to track the, your downstream changes. That branch could be, I don't know, one branch for each supported Fedora version, for example, but uh, if you have the same patches, then you could have just a single branch. We um, do have the same patches, yeah. Do, do the work in that in that branch, the downstream work in that branch, and then a uh, tooling service would come in and you could configure package, tell it which is, which is the Fedora package, this repository corresponds to uh, which disk git branches you would like to handle and things like that. And then uh, once the service is set up, uh, theoretically, we should be able, packet service uh, should be able to propose uh, a disk git change from that branch you have created. And in this, uh, this git change patches would be already like patch files in this git format and the archive uh okay. uploaded to look a side cache and things like that so i would so um if i would then make a change in my my forge repo the source for the source git forge repo um do i do anything to does a pr automatically get created on source fedora project.org every time i make a commit or what do i what do i do to trigger that. So uh, that's uh, like if you configure packet is the service which which currently can do this and which we use to support this whole source git idea. Um, and in packet you can configure to take certain actions uh, either when you open a PR or when you have just a new commit on a branch. So once you've done the, the work in your source git repo and your PR is merged, for example, in case you have it configured to take, for example, a, a proposed downstream action, um, if there is a new commit on the branch, then packet service would wake up and propose that change downstream in, in this git. So I, yeah, I am probably unlikely to do PRs for myself on the repo because I've forgotten to. That I know some people like. Push. I know some like people that. like to do that, but yeah. I, it's it's too too much overhead for a small thing to, in my, my mind. Um, the, the effect would be the same. So, um, what about releases? So, I mean, that's one of the things that um, you know the, the our traditional model has really been focused around. You know, this tarball is a official release of the upstream um, in some upstream projects never make releases these days, which, okay. Um, some make releases and then they tag the release in Git, and sometimes they make releases and there's no particular thing that gets tagged. How do I, how do, I do that? How does that translate to the disk Git? And how do things like version numbers and release numbers happen? Like if, 
if my package suddenly goes from version two to version three in the source git, um, do I have to then manually bump the spec file in the in the disk git to make that happen, or what, ha what happens there? Well, the, that's a good question, and honestly, we haven't thought about this yet because we are still trying to treat this upstream releases to be the kings. Uh, but I would say it definitely makes sense what you are what you just proposed that people would be able to create releases in their source git repositories, and then uh, then this would be carried over to Fedora and built there. Uh, yeah, right now we don't have, we probably don't have workflow for it, but I can write it down and we can create upstream issue for this and figure it out. Okay. Like, actually, for one part, what you asked, Matt, uh, we have support. Like the easy part for us is when, when the upstream tags its releases in Git, because then you will get those tags in your source Git also. And, and Packet already has some functionality, which probably could be improved, but we are, uh, Packet is able to figure it out from, from tags, the version number, okay. and even like filling in the spec file and update the spec file accordingly. So this kind of works. Uh, the things we haven't thought about is, okay, what happens when the release is not a Git tag? Um, and yeah, we need to figure it out solutions for, okay. for, for this use case also. So actually that makes, I have to go back to another basic question, which is, is there an expectation that will be, there will be a spec file or a spec file template in the source tree, or does that still primarily live in disk it? And this is a difference between like a lot of, a lot of Debian packages try to get the Debian control files into the upstream. Um, and we've never tried to do that really in Fedora. Uh, Actually, yeah, go ahead, Tomas, sorry. <laughs> oh, I already muted myself. <laughs> okay, uh, actually both. You can have all the downstream packaging files in your storage Git repository or your upstream repository, and that's the ideal thing because you are in full control of everything, but you can, Fetch it from Fedora disk git, for example, for every upstream action or source git action. So it's really up to you. I can see, and there's kind of two different major cases. And one is where I am both the Fedora packager and the upstream or part of the upstream, where it might be convenient to do that. That, Or there's the other case, like my, my project, you know, my package where I am, I'm not part of the upstream project. I just want it packaged in Fedora and the upstream People aren't particularly interested in that, so it um, th those are yeah. Okay. So when packet service started out, um, it was mainly intended as a as a tool to to help integrate upstream projects in in Fedora. And the main idea back then was that the easiest way to do this is to have the spec file upstream. And then everything works like a charm. But and this works very nice in cases when uh, uh, Fedora maintainer is, is also actively participating in the upstream projects. But we also learned that many upstream projects just like don't care about what's happening in Fedora, and they likely do so because that's not their business. They are not creating the distribution. They are doing their project. There's also the case where they want to make a spec file which will work for Fedora, OpenSUSE, Mandriva, and whatever other RPM-based um, things they are. And so they make a kind of a Franken spec file with a bunch of conditionals or a bunch of things. Or, you know, this this doesn't really conform to anybody's guidelines, but it'll build on all of them, so good enough. Or you know, my favorite. All those guidelines are stupid. I have my own way of building RPMs. Um, this is the um, spec file the way they should be, right? Um, so sometimes upstreams um, have, have their own ideas and then um, they have a spec file, but it's actually not useful at all in Fedora. Yeah. Sorry, that got carried away into a rant. I didn't even have a point. Uh, 
I, I guess I do have one question about that too, which is um, having all the spec files in Diskit as the source of truth makes it easy to do things like mass changes where we want to like introduce a new like license field into the um, thing where we do mass changes across a bunch of spec files. Um, if the if the source gets is the source of truth in some ways for the spec file, like how do how does that get reconciled? How do mass changes cross packages work? So I, I would say this gate is still the authoritative source of truth. And this is actually a hard requirement from federal proven packagers such as Miro Haranchuk, who says that they have scripts built around this git and they want to be always able to change things in this git for like for massive things. So we want to preserve this. Uh, and that's why whenever you do our ch changes in source git, like then they are uh, linked into this git and we want to have a way to do it uh, like the other way around as well. Yeah, it's going to be tricky and we still need to figure out like all the like all the corner cases, but that's what we need to do. Okay. Like um, thinking back will be problematic in, in in many cases, but for like mass changes, probably it should work fine. And if things cannot be reconciled by automation, then it's just open a PR and ask a human to, to fix it. That makes sense. Um, do people other than me have questions or comments? Uh, I was reading uh, the uh, the sorry the packet uh, you know the documentation. I have something a little bit in my mind when you asked it earlier. What about uh, I'm I'm currently testing and packaging uh, some um, how do I say code counter package wasn't exist in Fedora and I'm I just pack it in copper to testing purposes to see how this go is it going to be packable packageable. There's one problem I have. Uh, one package I made is actually archived. So the, the, the guy himself is doesn't even using anymore. Is this repository doesn't work? How is this going to work? Am I have to fork it again and maintain myself? Or because this is only using for just small portion of the code itself. So it doesn't actually matter. If I just have to build one time and let's just say this is version 001-1 and done. I don't care what happened because maybe the actual, I, I can also go to upstream and say to the guy, okay, please, can you just change this one if this is possible? Because this repository doesn't work anymore. It's an archive. Uh, there's two ways to do it. Ask to him or I need to find a way to how to do it myself in code and suggest it to him so we can just remove that part. But let's just say I can't do that and I need that package at the moment. How do I cope with this problem in this kind of situation? Because this archive actually, this repository doesn't work anymore. And I want to- yeah, you don't want to become the upstream maintainer for it. You just want to. You just want a copy of it that works. Right? So. Yeah, I just, I just want to use, I just want to use the code counter. And some people ask it to me earlier. One of my friends say, "Okay, is this package is exist?" I actually checked. It's actually fast. It's useful, but 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 we don't have it. I just pack I it for copper. It, sorry, so it's there. I, but yeah, what, please. I think you are mixing two different uh, kinds of questions here. So one is uh, if package is not maintained anymore and you need to re recover it, that's one thing. The other is uh, if uh, upstream was archived and dead and there is still a maintainer in Fedora, what the maintainer can do with a dead upstream and if a maintainer can re recover the new upstream. So Oh, yeah. And yeah. source yeah. git Thank folks, you. they cannot help you with that. Like if upstream for a certain project is dead, someone needs to become the new upstream. Mm -hmm. And if it's not you, then someone else needs to become the upstream, right? So, so I you have need to, to fi find someone. Yeah. Yeah. You have to fork it and you have to own it or you have to find someone else. Like dead upstream is dead and something all right. needs so to I, be done so to I'm fix gonna, it. I'm going to hold it and put package kits all over the mechanism. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. fine. <laughs> <clears throat> um, okay, is, 
Is that, uh, do, do you feel like your question is basically answered? Is there... uh, yeah, uh, but I still have one of the issue what you said earlier about version changing. So is, it's, I, I think it's, it needs to be changed somehow automatically to bump up the version in spec file somehow because we have to change it always manually. So I think packet doesn't provide that as I believe, as I understand at the moment, or I'm wrong. So, so in packet, you can either define a version template, or I also think we have an action which can output you a version string, and then oh. you can specify that in your spec file. And whenever a change is proposed to this git, that one is used. So if I just change, uh, if I just create, so this is the new version and the tag itself. So everything else is going to be bump up automatically and the change look and, and other stuff. So I yeah. just need to, I just, I just need to point the direction. This is the, you know, the new guy, new version, sorry, and done. Yeah, uh, well, the, the version template works based on tags. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that was like you need that tag in your source git repository or upstream repository, which like it looks like a version. Okay. Uh, okay. But then you can use it from there automatically to fill it in into the spec file. So is it counting the versions to incrementally uh, in that tag, or any documentation can you point to me to? So I can also test it on my copy repository and see how it's going to be. Uh, it, or it, like it, that tag configuration. I just in, in documentation. I don't know where. Can you show it if you know it already? It's just for yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But in the end, you should be covering uh, the versioning of, of the software because like packet yeah. can't know like what's the actual version you mean to have. So either it, like have it in Git tags or whenever there is a new upstream release, just like make sure it matches. So Packet doesn't change version in spec file for you. So you, you should be, ah, okay. like you are the maintainer, you, you need to know. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, just, just, okay, I got it, I okay. got Thanks. There's some links being dropped in the chat here, which we'll try to get into the YouTube archive as well. That's all for me, thanks. Okay. Um, anyone else have questions or comments? Yeah, I'll, I'll take one. Um, so one of the criticisms that I've seen of this model is that it requires a lot more Git knowledge than disk Git does. Um, so, you know, a lot of packagers of, uh, you know, software now in the disk Git model basically know just enough to do, you know, Git pull, Git branch, Git push. Um, and because you know they're not necessarily developers, they might have you know just enough skill to sort of do the packaging part, but not necessarily the the, the code contribution part. So how how much more Git knowledge does Source Git need in order to work, and how can we help our contributors get that? That's a difficult question to answer, I guess, because both of us are developers and for Git is kind of like a daily bread and. If I would give some perspective, <laughs> like I also work with Git a lot, <laughs> so I'm not in UV perspective, but I think that uh, Git it becomes quite a like default knowledge in the current way of working with things and not for developers alone but also for documentation writers for people who create designs and for people who work with all like creative and techni technological or like just text mess, uh, data so i think it's it's not something the source git folks may like resolve on themselves but it's something which generally happens with Git as technology that uh, it gets more and more reach to wider audiences and the tooling around Git becomes better. We have now web UIs of various kinds. We have now Git helpers. We have now Git clients. We have now a lot of visibility for how Git is working. And also, like, I don't think there is the actual deep dive into Git internals, like we are not doing 
a 20 heads merge like some kernel folks do, right? <laughs> so the, we don't really require the expert level of Git to uh, operate on that level, but indeed you like you need to be not afraid of taking this um, system and like looking into it. And, and personally, I believe that this is something uh, people need to start doing on the level of, you know, like how you learn arithmetics at school and at the 10th year or at school you learn Git because like this is your open, uh, your way to open the whole world for you as, a, as you graduate from school or something. So it's, we're not there yet, but this is, I think, where we're heading. It, it does seem like uh, maybe something we could do in Fedora to help people help onboard people. We could do Fedora classroom sessions around this and we could work specifically on some documentation of like this is the level of Git you're going to need to know to do this and we can, um, it, it could be a benefit to be doing this in Fedora because you're building your knowledge that like, uh, like you said, Alexandra is actually useful for a lot of other things as well. But it also, yeah, it also is a little bit of a barrier. Um, everything, every layer of things we do makes things more complicated. I so. think Justin has experience with docs writing right now we, we, where it happens with Git and I, I guess like migration from Wiki where you could just type in text and to Git where you can actually, you have to actually submit it is, is again like a barrier, but in the long term it's worth doing so. So yeah. Yeah. We, we, Um, on, the, on the other hand, I, I'm not sure if this is like uh, too brave from my side, but if I just take the use case you, you told us, Matt, that you are unpacking the archives and applying patches. Basically, you would do the same steps with Git. It's just like Git commands, not patch and this yeah. command you are doing right now. Uh, right, so and the, the, command the patch change. commands are pretty obscure too, right? Like patch dash u capital R and then an N because I want to make sure I don't miss the new files, right? Yeah, like, yeah, and it's actually, not like that. The git command line will help you to get rid of these obscurities because everything is already built in. Git right. doesn't I guess do anything. It, it, <laughs> if you're not scared of patch comments, you shouldn't be scared of Git. It's like, <laughs> right. if, if you manage that, you're, you're already, like, good enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that might just be a matter of a little bit of hand-holding. That was something we could definitely work on. Well, and that's something that we can, that's part, part of the reason we have these meetings at the council level is to kind of connect some of these things. Like, we've got this technical thing that's, you know, on the, very much on the engineering side about, we are you know, imp improving the packager workflow, and we can see, okay, there's a you know outreach and documentation and education need that's connected to that. So that's one of the things you can do with these kind of things. So that's, that's uh, cool. also the Git about the Git usage. It's already broadly has been posted in some uh, various places in Fedora as a video as a documentation also before. So that, our, that documentation requirement is actually in there as well. So making that is probably also easier because we already have a lot of stuff is pre, actually pretty much ready because I know that that Git one and one and you know further is, has been shot before tons of times as well. So that Git doesn't change too much. So it's there. Cool. And like just one thing. One of the drivers that motivates us to work on this is, is that we think that with source Git, we would enable a larger uh, group of developers who are not part of Fedora yet and for whom learning this Git would be yet another bump to take to, to come and be able to participate. So if we bring the way we do packaging in Fedora closer to how development happens in upstream, then then we think we could bring in more people to the to the community itself. Yep, that makes sense to me. Um, I guess the the next big question is, you know, what we can what can we do for you to help? And I've, I'll, one, one of the things is you were talking about priorities and, you know, the CPE team needing to stand things up and um, having uh, data center move and things being top priorities over that. 
Um, I know, you know, the, the first quarter of CP time is pretty much spoken for, and like everybody under the pandemic, their capacity is lower than usual as well. And they've got, um, you know, finishing up the, the authentication system and there's ongoing CentOS stream work. Um, but they will have, you know, they will have capacity in the future. Um, so if it sounds like we do want to wait a little bit to see how the Git Forge in Fedora thing is going to work out. Um, but when you're what, when you're ready for more of that, talk to us because uh, the, part of our job as Fedora Council is to uh, help CP understand what the Fedora community priorities are and help kind of rank what the priorities are. And this sounds like a good, important initiative that we'd be very happy to tell them is important uh, w when you're ready to do it. Yeah, that, that sounds absolutely great, and uh, we'd love to because I feel like I, I mean I'm personally struggling with like proposing initiatives or changes within Fedora and carrying them towards like success, and especially for things big like this, it's really intimidating. So like getting help from you would be very much appreciated. And the other thing I wanted to say is. Right now we are strictly focused on CentOS stream and when that work is done, we should be able to reuse the same workflow, same code for doing this within Fedora. So, and that would be ideal. Okay. Um, I guess another thing, uh, maybe a thing that Ben is working on. Ben, are you ready to talk about your program manager team idea? Not yet. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Stay, stay tuned. Um, so we're looking at kind of uh, you talked about um, you know the um, I don't know intimidation factor or just the um, it feels like a lot of workload to help like shepherd changes through Fedora. Um, ben is working on some things to help help teams with that to help you know, get assistance to people with you know getting getting uh, following up on you know help making changes actually happen and making sure all the details are taken care of and things like that. So that's something we can probably help with as well as time goes forward. Thank um, you. Are there other things where we could help? I think we are still in the phase of, uh, of proving the concept and, and working on the tooling and proving the uh, tooling to and make it familiar the community with this this whole idea. Okay. Cool. So, uh, right, let let us know when there are things. A question um, I have is: uh, Do you have already early adopters among Fedora maintainers with whom you work, or you're looking for them still? Like, do you have people to work with on on this initial setup? So we already have plenty of usually Red Hat teams who are interested and we are like in touch with them. Uh, and this is mainly for the central stream work. And at the same time, we have plenty of uh, people who use this in upstream, like without the source getting that they directly use packet in upstream and then get their upstream releases to Fedora directly, which is really great. But at the same time, we definitely look for more people. Like the, that would be perfect if more people tried this and on their packages. Because as more and more people use this, we run into different issues, problems, corner cases, and it's like I, I can see that it's getting better every day with more bugs we fix. Like it's getting more stable or like more corner cases being fixed. So that, that'd be that'd be nice. Thanks for bringing that up, Alexander. That's a good point. Uh, maybe a community blog post asking for more testers is probably or is something that could um, bring some of that. Or we could even do, if you're ready for a bigger bigger thing, we could do a develop announce post saying you're ready for that. Um, or just develop list posts reminding people this is an ongoing thing and you need more help or more volunteers. I think there were some of the posts like this, yes. I recall, and, and uh, at DEF CON, uh, you're going to be presenting source yeah. as well, right? Yes, yeah, and so. we are going to have also a workshop there. So may maybe, Matt, you not just uh, like uh, do additional announcement, but when you will announce this video call, for example, from a console side, also say that, uh, yeah, everyone yeah. is welcome again. 
Absolutely. Reiterate a message. <laughs> We would definitely would like to do that. We are just like in the middle of some work. We would like to wrap up. Uh, things are a little bit unstable right now. <laughs> okay, uh, so wait, we, till, wait till it's ready. Oh, there was a presentation on Flop last summer and Tomas had a blog post, a federal community blog post, if I remember well. And there was also a very fruitful discussion on, on Devo. Um, last year sometime i don't know 2020 is a blur but yeah there was one <laughs> yeah it was in autumn uh, after flock yeah it was actually too fruitful uh but yeah right now we are focused on devconf which is in one month so we would love to have the workshop there and basically let people try it out and hopefully use it and from that point, we could actually do some blog post or something to do more promo because at that point we should have like better, but like more things implemented and more things covered. Cool. Um, any any closing words, final remarks? So I'll be honest, it's very late here. It's almost 8 p.m. and I'm really <laughs> tired. So okay, th th yeah. thank you for inviting us. And yeah, we are really trying to work this out. And if you have any ideas, how can we make it better? Please let us know. We would love to discuss it. All right, awesome. Thank you very much for joining us late at night. And I will let you go. Goodbye, everybody. See you next month. Thanks, Al. Before that, for a lot of people, but uh, the video call again next month. Thank you, Sia. See you. See you.